नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय बोधरे श्रीमदे भक्ति विकास स्वामी तिनामिने नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय बोधरे श्रीमदे भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी गुरुशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य निषत्कारिणी श्री श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवाशादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो थैंक यू वेरी मच दिनेश प्रभु एंड आल्सो हिज ग्रेस पति नरेन प्रभु फॉर होस्टिंग दिस प्रेजेंटेशन एंड प्रभु कैन यू एज कैन यू म्यूट ऑल द ऑडियंस यू नो बिकॉज़ यू नो देयर इज सम यू नो साउंड इन द बैकग्राउंड ऑल राइट सो एंड आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम हिज ग्रेस सिमेशफिरा प्रभु सो थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रभु for attending you know despite your busy schedule so please accept our humble obeisances and also i can see that uh, he is grace shanti prabhu is also here shanti vardhana prabhu so welcome prabhu so please accept our humble obeisances and also uh, welcome to all our vaishnavas and vaishnavis today so without wasting our time so let uh, let's move into our presentation okay so is my screen visible bro uh, please let me know yes bro okay all right so as we all know uh, our topic today we will uh, speak about cows right? so we will speak about cows so krishna loves all cows so this is our topic today so we all know krishna huh? krishna is to bhagavan swayam so krishna is a supreme personality of god right but cows huh? many of us know cows but how how depth in depth we know about cows right so yeah that's what we going to study today right on our presentation so regarding cows right so i will uh, brief you through the flow of our presentation what uh, Uh, we going to discuss today right so first uh, i'll give you some uh, you know uh, background understanding right how we came up with this topic you know suddenly we are speaking about cows so why we came up with such a topic and then we will proceed to the definition of cows you know what is the meaning of cows from the evidences from guru shaud and shastra hmm? according to our shastra and then we will see evidences from the traditional visual arts right and then we will move on to evidences from the deity worship tradition right and then we will move on to uh, aparavidya that means evidence from the material knowledge right so shastrical knowledge the first part will be presented by his grace raja parikshit prabhu and then i will take over from the uh, material knowledge part from the modern science perspective right and then we will look into the ayurvedic experts view right and then we will go through the uh, evidence from iskon highest authority what does they say right and also some other external sources we'll go through that also right so without delay so yeah let us go into the topic right so let me give you some uh, background understanding on why we are discussing on this subject matter cows right so you see uh, what happened is you know like uh, one year back few year back you know i i you know was uh, reading this article uh, about cows right and milk you know according to this article it is a scientific research it's a research paper you know the claim was uh, actually milk can cause health problem right you know so the, there's a many articles out there which are claiming that we should avoid milk and the reason is because it can cause heart attack heart problems cholesterols you know high cholesterols you know can impair your cognitive function right so all these things are there so i i was i was shocked i was shocked because according to shastra we all know that milk is very important right we should take milk we should consume milk and in fact it is good for our health for our intelligence right but now there are studies showing otherwise right so how do we understand this so i i i go through many papers then i go through shila propat books 
our Vedic scriptures, Ayurvedic Shastra. Then I came to know that actually the problem is hmm, they are different gradations of milk hmm, according to the origin of cow, right? So they, they call it, the scientific community call this A1 and A2. So this is referring to a protein molecules. A1 means it's a milk coming from the hybrid cows, Western cows. And A2 means it's a milk coming from the pure breed, which is example like Indian native cows. So this is what I get to know. Then uh, after some times, you know, I, you know, also there's a lot of problems among our devotees. You know, our devotees are getting sick despite being vegetarian, isn't it? We are getting heart problems, diabetics, hypertension. Right? So due to that, you know, I try to switch hmm? on instead of taking these, uh, you know, the supermarket geese, I switch into these uh, Indian cow geese. Right? I ordered from India and I test it for myself. Right? And actually it works. So uh, for, for, for my, my personal opinion, I find it good. And when I shared it to my friends, our devotees, they also liked it. Right? So what I did was I started to distribute among devotees. So one month ago, actually, I shared this benefit of A2 Ghee in our ISKCON group, WhatsApp group, as a devotee business group, right? So yeah, we have, a, I received a mixed a mixed uh, response. So some of the devotees, they they welcomed it, they bought it, they, they feel it is good. And some of the devotees, they feel, you know, they feel that all cows are the same. So why you want to differentiate? All milks are the same. Why you want to differentiate? Right? Krishna loves all cows. So don't differentiate the milks. So this is a statement given by some of the devotees. Right? So yes, definitely Krishna loves all cow. Right? Krishna loves everyone. But our point here is they are a different gradation among the milk. Right? So according to where, what is the origin of milk? Right? So that is why today's our topic is entitled Krishna loves all cow. We agree with that. Suradam Sarva Bhutanam. Krishna is the well wish of everyone. Right? But what we're going to see today is what is the difference? They are similarities, they are different. So we'll address both of it, right? So this is the background understanding of how we came into this topic, right? So today, right? Because many of the devotees, uh, and also, yeah, another important point is that uh, His Grace Simeshara Prabhu, he suggested that why not we have a cow forum, right? Instead of discussing in the WhatsApp group, why not we have a cow forum, right? So by following the instruction of uh, His Grace Simeshura Prabhu, so now we have a cow forum discussing on cows, and we will go through all the evidences from Shastra, right? Guru Shadu Shastra and all other evidences, right? So I will hand over the first part of the presentation to His Grace Raja Parikshit Prabhu, right? So yes, please Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shrimate Bhakti Vikasa Swami Inamini, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Inamini, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharini, Girvishesha Shunavadi Pasta De Deshatarini, Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Prabhus and Matajis. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, His Grace Simhesara Prabhu, His Grace Shanti Vardhan Prabhu, and uh, Patidharan Prabhu, Tinesh Prabhu, thank you very much for hosting. Uh, so also thank you to Virapraksit Prabhu. Uh, so actually uh, Virapraksit Prabhu uh, in, in invited me to also you know, take part in the cow forum, which was suggested by His Grace uh, Simhesara Prabhu. So uh, I think we already have the background. So now uh, we will move on to the uh, next part, which is uh, just before we get into the topic, we will look at um, in the in the course of the discussion um, regarding the milk that happened in the group, uh, one of the devotees shared an article which uh, refuted certain points uh, which uh, Parikshit Prabhu shared initially uh, in initially to to support his point. He shared some. Uh, some evidences and it was refuted uh, in that article, right? So first of all, uh, we will analyze uh, the points or the uh, views of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, opposing uh, point, uh, opposing party, 
and then I will uh, present it. And while the presentation is going on, it will be a presentation come uh, refutation of the article, right? So we will share the link to the article at the end of the discussion. And, uh, but anyways, I will summarize uh, what is the uh, points uh, that is being, uh, uh, that was discussed in the article. So first of all, the author of the article uh, said that the definition of a cow given by Patanjali Muni uh, is not a scientific one, right? So he goes at great length to show how uh, this uh, definition is actually not scientific uh, and so on, which we will uh, get into that. And then uh, he also showed how Jiva Goswami in Tattva Sandarbha didn't define a cow, right? So we will also look at that. Um, and then he also points out uh, how the Surya, uh, Surya Ketu Nadi uh, is not found in Shastras, right? There, there is no reference to Surya Ketu Nadi which is uh, in Shastras. And ultimately, he showed conclusively how Srila Prabhupada praised the Western breed cows, right? So this is the gist of the, uh, of the article. And uh, we don't uh, disagree entirely with this uh, article. This article actually uh, raises many good points. And we do agree with certain uh, points that the author has given, but we also disagree with certain points, uh, which we will uh, show why, and we will justify why, right? So um, I will just um, uh, just show the uh, the article, so that yes, so this is the link, right? Okay. Anyways. So this is the link. Are Western breed cows actually cows? Okay. So this is the article which uh, uh, that I spoke about, right? So later we will share this link, and I think some devotees are already aware of this uh, article. So, anyways, we will uh, come to that later on, right? So this is the article that we will be uh, refuting as we uh, present this uh, as we. Uh, go through this presentation. Okay, so now let's get uh, let's get back to this. Okay, so now let's define what is a cow, right? So this is a very important point because we have to get it very clear what is a cow, right? So we may have our own understanding of a cow, but we have to know what uh, how is a cow defined according to shastras, right? So here is the definition of a cow given by Patanjali Muni, uh, which is quoted from Mahabhasha, right? What is Mahabhasha? I'll just get to it soon. So first, let's look at the definition here. Okay. Atha gaurityatraka shabdaha, right? This is the first question. Actually, uh, this Mahabhasha is a commentary on uh, the uh, grammar treatise or the standard grammar uh, sutra by Panini called Ashtadhyayi, right? So Patanjali Muni, we know famously he wrote the Yoga Sutras, but he is also, uh, he was also a very great grammarian, right? So he wrote this very famous Mahabhasha, which is accepted by everyone, right? It is accepted by all uh, scholarly uh, personalities, and it is one of the foundation texts because without studying grammar, you cannot understand um, anything in Shastras, right? So in his commentary, commenting on the very first sutra, right, of the uh, Ashtadhyayi, he raises this question, right? He raises this question. Atha gaurityatra shabdaha, this is the first thing he asks. So now the question is, what is the word in cow, right? So in the word gauhu, right? When we say gau, cow, what is the word there? This is the question, right? He raises this question, okay? So generally what we understand is if you say cow, the word is C-O-W, that combination is what you call a word, right? But 
if you if we see in Sanskrit grammar, that is not how a word is defined, as it will be clear soon. So, so now the question is being asked, what is the word in Gauhu? So then he goes through a series of answers, rejecting all those answers, and ultimately he comes to this. And he gives he himself answers the question, right? He says, Yeno Charitena Sasna Langula. Kakuda Kura Vishani Nam Sampratyayo Bhavati Sashabdaha. This is what he says, right? So that which being pronounced Yena Ucharitena when it is pronounced Ucharitena, right? That which being pronounced leads to the comprehension Sampratyayo Bhavati that which gives you the comprehension. That means when you pronounce something it leads to the comprehension of the animal possessing dewlap tail hump hoof and horn is called shabda or word so this is how a word is defined right so he says that when you say the word gauhu it is not referring to what you write as gauhu right it is referring to the comprehension of the animal, that which rises in your mind, right? Because we know that the mind has three functions, thinking, willing, and feeling, right? So when, we, when, when the tongue vibrates that, it leads to the comprehension of an animal possessing these five features. That is the word. So this is the definition of a cow that we get from Patanjali, right? Now we have to verify if the definition given here, is it a scientific definition or as the author has claimed in that article that we have uh, shown just now, he says this is not a scientific definition because this is a Vyakarana text. This is a grammar text, right? This is not a text discussing about animal anatomy. Right, it, it is not a, it is not a discussing animal anatomy. So why would you take this as the definition of a cow? Right, this is the uh, objection raised by the uh, by the uh, author. Right, but to check whether this definition is right or wrong, we will have to look through all the other evidences from shastras. Okay, so now this is the definition given by Patanjali Muni. Right, so. Now, this is a gau, right? A cow. And this is what we call as sasna. Sasna means the dew lap, right? The loose, right? Uh, uh, skin that hangs right below the neck. And then we have langula, right? Langula refers to the, the tail, right? And then we have kakuda. Kakuda refers to the hump, right? And then we have the kura, which refers to the hoof, right? And then we have vishana, right? This refers to the horn. So the animal that possesses these five features is what we call as a cow, right? So now when we look at this, right? This is what a cow is, generally we know. And this is also a cow that we generally know, right? So we can see that this cow possesses everything that was previously mentioned, except, except the hump, right? This is the difference. So now this is where the contention comes, right? Because it has, right? <coughs> Kura, Langula, Vishana, Sasna, everything is there. But the Kakuda, the hump is not there, right? This is the difference. So this is a Jersey cow, a Western breed cow. And what we see is it has withers, right? So we can see here, it has withers, right? Withers is different from hump, right? So now looking at the anatomy of a cow, the withers is made of the spinous process of the thoracic vertebra, right? Thoracic vertebra is the rib cage, right? Our rib cage is here, but the cow's rib cage is right horizontal, right? And this the backbone, right? It has projections 
and that projection is what forms the vidas so this is what uh, uh, so uh, this is what we call as a vidas uh, as, as vidas and this vidas is basically a bony structure right but a hump is not a bony structure a hump is made of flesh it is highly vascularized uh, uh, vascularized and there is no bone right it sits on top the vidas that is not found in the jersey cows Therefore, the Jersey cows have most of the features, but it misses one, which is the hump, right? So this is the very important point to note here, right? Some may say that, oh, even you can see a small hump, you can take it as a hump. It's not, right? Because withers and hump is two different things. If you want to know what a hump is, what the structure of a hump is, uh, uh, what the stru structure of hump looks like, then we have to, you, you, we can Google it. In fact, Unfortunately, that is one of, uh, you know, it is one of the very famous uh, part that the demonic part of the society like to eat, right? So, because it is very fleshy, it's, they say this, right? It is very vascular and it's full with nutrient. This is what they say, right? So, anyways, so it's not made of bone now there is a difference between hump and withers so you must know the difference this is a hump right this is a hump this is withers right okay so now anyways we have seen the definition given by patanjali now we have to counter check that with evidences from guru sadhu and shastra right which is the most important thing okay now in a lecture uh, given by Srila Prabhupada in 1974 in melbourne he says Surabhir Abhipalayantam, right? He says, uh, Bhagavan is, right? Surabhir Abhipalayantam. Uh, this is quoted from Brahma Samhita. Everyone knows this uh, shloka because all of us uh, uh, sing this in the morning. So he takes pleasure in tending the cows, Surabhi. These are Surabhi cows, not these ordinary cows, Surabhi cows. So here Prabhupada is making it very clear in Melbourne that the cows that Krishna tend in Goloka Vrindavana, in Vrindavan, are Surabi cows, right? So he doesn't deal with any of these ordinary cows. All the cows in Vrindavan are Surabi cows. So Bhagavan tends Surabi cows. This is uh, uh, quoted, uh, this is quoted from Brahma Samhita in a lecture by Srila Prabhupada in Melbourne, right? Now, let's study Surabi first because that is the original prototype of all cows. Okay. So in Mahabharata, we find this. Yatraste surabhir mata gavam gavam amrata sambhava. So here the keyword surabhir mata gavam. Surabhi is the mother of all cows. Okay. So the origin of all cows is from Surabhi, of course, because Krishna is the source of everything. Janmadi asya yataha. Right? He is the source of everything. So, his cow is also the original prototype of all other cows. Right? And it is said here that she is born from Amrita, from nectar. Right? Of course, in different days of Brahma, Surabhi appears in different ways. Uh, but the famous way that everyone knows how Surabhi came about in this world is from Amrita. Right? And then it is stated here, Sharanti Satatang Shirang Prithivi Sarasambhavam Shannam rasanang sarena rasamekam anuttamam. So she always yields milk, which is the essence of all the best things of the earth. Shiram prithivi sarasambhavam. So that milk that, that Surabi produces is the essence of all the best things of, of the earth. That means it is the top notch milk, is the best kind of milk, right? In fact, it is the essence of all the different, uh, six different kinds of taste, right? This is what is stated in Mahabharata. And in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, very famous, everyone knows this, Dhenu Nam Asmi Kamaduk, right? So, of all the Dhenus, I am Kamadenu, right? Uh, another name for Surabi, right? So, Srila Prabhupada translates here, among cows, I am the Surabi. And again, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada states, it is stated that the Lord is engaged in herding the Surabi cows. Okay? So, again, uh, Prabhupada is uh, uh, showing here that Krishna. He heard Surabi cows. 
Now, what features does the Surabi cow has? This is what we have to find out. And we have a direct reference to that in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 13, Shloka 30. Now, this Chapter 13, we know that Canto 10 is the crown jewel of all the Cantos, right? It is the crown jewel of, of Srimad Bhagavatam. So in Chapter 13, it deals with Brahma Vimohana Leela. So there we find, I'm just quoting one line of that shloka, Dvipat Kakudgriva Dasya Pucho. So here, um, I will read the whole uh, translation here. When the cows saw their own calves from the top of Govardhana Hill, they forgot themselves and their caretakers because of increased affection. And okay. although the path was very rough, they ran towards their calves with great anxiety, each running as if with one pair of legs. Their milk bags full and flowing with milk, their heads and tails raised, and their humps moving with their necks. They ran forcefully until they reached their calves to feed them. These cows, and these cows have kakuda. The Surabi cows in Vrindavan have kakuda. It's very clear from here that they fulfill the definition given by Patanjali. That means Patanjali has not given a wrong definition. He has given the right definition. Right? Kakut griva. Griva means neck. Hayagriva. Right? Hayagriva means, you know, uh, Bhagavan, Hayagriva Bhagavan, who has a horse neck. Right? Kakut griva means, right, the hump with their necks. Right? So the humps were moving with their necks. Right? So from Srimad Bhagavatam, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has uh, called as Amala Puranam, we can clearly see that the cows in Vrindavan have kakut. Okay. Next. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Kento 3, shloka, uh, chapter 3, shloka 4, kakudmino vidhanaso, kakudmino vidhanaso, sorry, kakudmino vidhanaso damitva. Here it describes Krishna uh, uh, subduing the seven bulls, right, in order to get. Uh, princess Nag, uh, Nagnajiti, right? So all the seven bulls, the bulls itself are known as Kakudmi. Kakudmi means the bulls, right? So in fact, this is the origin of uh, the very famous Jali Kattu, which is uh, um, uh, you know, very, very much celebrated in uh, Tamil Nadu. So this is seven bulls. It was started by Krishna, right? And if you look at the Jali Kattu, what do they do? They catch hold of the Kakud, that is how you win. How do you subdue the bull is by catching hold the kakud, right? So, and the bull are known as kakud mino, right? In short, Bhagavatam again, right? I'm just going to focus on kakud because all other features are found in all, all the cows. But this kakud is what differentiates it, right? So we're going to see, is this really the scientific definition or it's not? Okay, next. In short, Bhagavatam. Again, so this was in the first is in right in Vrindavan. Kakudmino, the seven bulls, right? This is of course out of Vrindavan, but it's still Krishna. Arishta, right? This Arishta demon, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 3, Shloka 36. Mahim Maha Kakut Kayaha. Arishta, he took the form of a bull in order to be he, he wanted to disguise himself as a bull and enter into uh, one of uh the uh, as one of the cow or one of one of the cow or one of the bulls uh in krishna's party so of course he has to replicate what the bulls and cows look like in vrindavan and it is explained here very nicely mahim mahakakut kayaha so he had a this arishta demon he took the form of a bull with a large hump mahakakut right and this hump Kakudya Chala Shankaya, right? The Arishta Sura's hump was so huge, they mistook it for a mountain, right? And clouds were hovering, right? So again, it clearly shows what is the anatomy of the bulls and cows in Vrindavan. Okay? Then, so this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, right? Now, let's look at another uh, evidence from Ananda Vrindavana Champu. Uh, we have to thank. Uh, his grace, Himesara Prabhu, for giving us the pointer 
to look in Ananta uh, Ananda Vrindavan Shampu, right? He told us to, you know, probably look for pointers here, and we found pointers here. So Ananda Vrindavan Shampu is a poetry. It, it's a uh, it's in the form of a uh, champu, right? Kavya. So this uh, this is by Kavi Karanapura, right? Uh, who is a Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya, right? So here he describes about. Uh, the Govardhan Leela. In the Govardhan Leela, the Gopas are speaking to Krishna and they are speak, telling Krishna, look at the condition of the bulls. Upon heating their humps, the heavy hailstones are being ground into pieces and scattering on the ground like pearls. Right? So, the hailstones are falling and when they hit the humps of the bulls, it shatters and it becomes like pearls. So, again, right? <clears throat> Kavi Karnapur is also giving us very clear indication what the original Surabi cow looked like, right? Then, here again, continuing the discussion on uh, uh, on the uh, uh, Govardhan Leela, Kavi Karnapur very beautifully uh, describes the cow here. Huh? The cow sheltered the calves under the blankets of loose skin on their necks, right? The sasna. In fear of slashing, in fear of the slashing rainwater, the cows kept their eyes almost closed and their tails hanging straight down. Okay. As they shivered uncontrollably from the violent rains, the skin on their backs swelled up. While standing in this painful condition, they looked toward Krishna for shelter. When the rain hit the horns of the bulls, it bounced off and landed on their thick, fatty humps. So very amazingly, Kavi Karnapur describes what a hump should be like, right? The hump is thick and fatty, it's not bony. Right? Right. So it's thick and fatty. Right? So this is uh, what a hump should look like, right? It is thick and fatty, it's not a bony structure, it is a flashy structure. Okay. Then um, in another section uh, describing when Krishna was when Krishna goes for Surabi Ravi Palayanda, when he tends to the cow, they go to many places. So they at one point, they're crossing the Yamuna River, right? So here, uh, the cows are described here. The heavy, water-soaked tails of the cows hung motionless under the water. Keeping their heads and humps above the water, they flowed with the currents and finally reached the Yamuna's opposite shore. So the cows were crossing the Yamuna River and the only two things that were visible above the water was their heads and the hump. These are the cows, not the bulls. The cows also had humps, right? And it's as, as big as their heads, right? And, uh, and then he uh, goes on to explain, I just read the final line. The mother of the calves followed behind anxiously. The tall humps on the back of the mature bulls made waves as they, move, as, they move through, as they move through the Yamuna, right? So the bulls had bigger humps and when they move, it created waves. So the bulls had hump, the cows had hump. This is Kavi Karnapur's description of the Surabi cows in Vrindavan, right? Then we look at Shrimad Ramayana, right? In Shrimad Ramayana, in uh, the fifth canto, uh, which is uh, Sundara Kanda, which is the most famous canto, here we see the shloka, Mangnayet Yadi Kakutstastat, right? If Kakutsta, the destroyer of his opponent's armies, would overwhelm Lanka, with his arrows and take me with him, that would be like him. So these words were spoken by none other than uh, Sita Devi herself. So she says, she refers to Rama as, as Kakutstas, right? She say, she's speaking to Hanuman. She says that if Kakutsta comes and de uh, destroys Lanka and take me back, that would be like him, right? Because Hanuman offered, you know, right now you jump, I will take you back. So she refers to Rama as Kakutsta. This is Lord Rama's name. One of his name is Kakutsta, right? So why did he get this name? We find from Srimad Bhagavatam in Canto 9, Yuyutsu Kakudistitaha. So actually, he, coming in the Surya Vamsa, Rama's forefather was Uranjaya, right? He once battled with the demons and Indra became, took the form of a bull and Puranjaya stood on that bull which was Indra, while fighting with the demons. And he stood on the kakud, on the hump of that bull. Because Puranjaya 
stood on the hump of that bull, his name became Kakutsta. Kakudistitaha, Kakutsta. Right? The one who stood upon the Kakut. Right? And because Lord Rama appeared in the line of Kakutsta, he is known as Kakutsta. Right? So, therefore, again, in all the Vedic scriptures, right, we have seen from Srimad Bhagavatam, from the description of Ananda Vrindavana Champu by, by our own Gode Vaishnava Acharyas, from Srimad Ramayana, we can see this very clearly, right? So, now, coming to Sri Tattva Sandarbha, Anucheda 9, in this Anucheda 9, Sri Jiva Goswami, he shows all the evidences of knowledge, right? And one of the evidence is known as Upamana, okay? Upamana, right? Upamana means comparison. The Malay word Umpama, I think we all of us know the word Umpama, right? The Malay word Umpama comes from Sanskrit Upamana, right? Upamiti, right? The, the actual thing is Upamiti, right? So Upamana. So in order to get Upamiti, you employ Upamana, right? So Upamiti Karanam Upamanam, right? So this is what is stated. So uh, we know uh, uh, Umpama, uh, what? Umpama Buku Dengan Ruas, uh, for example. Uh, so Umpama means like comparison. So now Shri Jiva Goswami quotes this in order to, he is not defining a cow, he is showing how this Upamana can be employed. He shows what is the example. So he is actually quoting from another Shastra known as Tarka Sangraha, which is a very important uh, uh, Shastra Granta in Nyaya Shastras, right? So he says here, suppose we have seen an ordinary cow, but never seen a forest cow, Gavaya, and someone tells us that a Gavaya resembles a cow, then we may recognize a Gavaya when we see one. This is what he's telling. That means if you know what a cow is, Right? And if you've never seen a Gavaya, a forest cow, and if someone says, okay, if you've never seen it, it's okay. But if you have seen, if you know what a cow is, then you will know what a Gavaya is. So, what we can understand from this is that there must be a definition of a cow first. Unless you know what a cow is, then you cannot know what a Gavaya is. Right? So, by inference, we can understand that there must be a definition to a cow. We are not saying that this Tattva Sandarbha in Anucheda 9, Jiva Goswami is defining a cow, right? He says, Go Sadrusho Gavaya. If you've seen a go, then you know what a Gavaya is, right? So now I've quoted the full uh, in the article. It looks very haywire. I'm not sure where the uh, author quoted from. So uh, anyways, this is the Tarka Sangraha 56, Shloka 56, right? Uh, this is the uh, full Shloka, right? So he's showing the uh, uh, upamana. What is upamana? Right. So the the important point comes here, right? Kaschit, this line here, the third line, that beginning with tatahi, kaschit bavaya bavaya padartha majana, sorry, bavaya padartha maja maja majanan kutaschit aranya aranya kapurusha gosadrusho gavaya iti shrutva vanangato vakyartas mara Smara Smaran Gosha Drisham Pindam Pashati Tadanantara Maso Gavaya Shab Gavaya Shabda Vacha Ityu Pamiti Rupadyate. Okay, so basically this is a very important line because now he's telling that in Tarka Sangraha he's telling that someone doesn't know what a Gavaya is, right? So what is he doing? He doesn't know what a Gavaya is, but he's lear learning from a Aranyaka Purusha, from a from a person who lives in a forest that go sadrusho gavaya if you have seen a cow you know what a gavaya is right iti shrutva vanam gato after hearing this he goes to the forest right he goes to the forest and then bakyartas marana go sadrasham pindam and then he sees a pindam a form right which looks like a go and then he reminds he reminds himself of what the aranyaka purusha said that that uh, forest man said, if you see something that looks like a cow, that is Gavaya in the forest, right? So Pindam Pashyati Tadanantara Maso Gavaya Shabda Vachaya Iti. So now, now we understood, oh, this is what is known as a Gavaya. So this is the whole point, right? This is what is quoted in Sri Tattva Sandarbha. 
okay to show upamana so but by and by by looking at this we can understand that there must be a definition of a cow if you don't know what a cow is then you cannot know what gavaya is and that is supported by patanjali by all the shastras we have seen so far that there is a clear definition of what a cow is right because cow is a very very famous word right it is one of the famous laukika words right so we have to very clearly define what a cow is and the definition is there right so this this is the translation okay so now therefore we have shown here that there is clearly uh uh it, it, it is it is very clearly shown what a cow is right there is no doubt that all the cows in vrindavan had prakut there is the original prototype of the cows and that is what a, a cow should look like and patanjali's muni's uh, patanjali muni's definition is valid right so now from shri chaitanya charitamrita right adi leela robert writes in the purport shri jiva goswami compiled the grammar in two parts named lagu hari nama amrita vyakarana and brahadhari nama amrita vyakarana if someone studies these two texts in vyakarana or grammar he learns the grammatical rules of the sanskrit language and simultaneously learns how to become a great devotee of lord krishna so the author in that article says this is a vyakarana grantha it cannot define what a cow is it is not a, a, a pashu shastra or go shastra right but here we see in the purport shila jiva goswami writes a, a vyakarana shastra right in a way that if you study the these two granthas lagu hari nama nama amrita vyakarana and brahad hari nama amrita vyakarana you not only learn grammar but you will become a great devotee of krishna so are we going to reject oh no this is a vyakarana shastra since it's a vyakarana shastra there's nothing you cannot speak about who is the supreme here this is not a book establishing who is the supreme so we are not going to accept about anything about krishna here you only should accept the grammatical part that is wrong there is a wrong definition there is a wrong understanding right you can learn about vyakarana at the same time you learn about krishna for example if we are in school the teacher is teaching us grammar right this is a cow okay the cow has three legs if this was printed in our textbooks in malaysia will the parents not raise a concern will anyone say no grammatically it's correct so don't worry because it's a grammar book so never mind if the children just know that they know the grammar but if they think the cow has three legs that's fine because it's a grammar book nobody would say that they will say please correct it cow has four legs you know please correct it but it is not a book discussing cow anatomy so why would you bother so this is the logic that the author tries to pursue and it is not right right it doesn't make sense right vyakarana shastra is a science it is a scientific treatise and read by all kinds of scholars you cannot define a cow wrongly in such a shastra shastra itself means science right so here in shri chaitanya bhagavata madhya kanda bhakti siddhanta shri bhakti siddhanta saraswati goswami maharaj right in his gaudiya bhasha commentary says the branch of the vedas known as vyakarana vyakarana or grammar is said to be the mouth of the personified vedas grammar is the source of perfection for all kinds of knowledge this is what vyakarana shastra is it is it is the it, it is a 100% scientific uh, uh, grantha right you cannot say that there is you cannot include anything that is non scientific in that in fact it is one of the vedangas it is the very mouth of the personified vedas this is bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur's words right so to say that no this that definition is not scientific we cannot accept it it's wrong because first of all the definition is supported by vyasa muni repeated by shukadev goswami in shrimad bhagavatam it is repeated by our gaudiya vaishnava acharyas uh, kavi karnapur it is repeated by valmiki muni in valmiki ramayana how can you say that the definition is wrong the definition is clear that is what it is right so even in mahabharata it is there 
and vyakarana is not just a grammatical treatise right whatever that this is scholarly text if you're going to write something you have to write everything which is scientifically shastrically accurate you cannot write something that is wrong right otherwise how can grammar be the source of perfection of all kinds of knowledge it should only be the perfection of grammatical knowledge but it is said here it is a source of perfection for all kinds of knowledge in fact in the vedanta sutra right uh, balade vidya bhushan uh, 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 balade vidya bhushan ramanuja acharya madhvacharya they all quote that particular sutra which panini writes which defines that narayana is a proper noun narayana is not a common noun narayana is a proper noun so from that itself we know who the supreme personality of godhead is so they are showing who is the supreme personality of godhead from the vyakarana shastras so you cannot say oh no this is not scientific we th- there's a grammar book you cannot understand about cows there no you can understand you cannot write anything wrong in that kind of book especially from right uh, a book which is highly respected right so otherwise it will be rejected nobody would study it okay so this is the point so vyakarana is a vedanga it is one of the six angas of the vedas it cannot there cannot be any mistake in the text or in the commentary to it otherwise it will be rejected okay so this is the point so having seen the evidences from shastras i hope it is very clear right that is beyond doubt that this definition is solid right the definition of a cow that it should have dew lap sasna langula which is the tail kura which is the uh uh the hoofs and uh kakuda which is the hump and the vishana which is the uh, uh which are the horns is valid and solid it is supported by all shastras right this is the uh, proposition that we are putting forward we hope uh, the devotees have uh, you know uh, considered this carefully and uh, understand this right so now we will move on to the next section which is uh, looking uh, at the evidences from traditional visual arts okay so we have seen the tradition from the vedic texts shastric texts now let's look at the traditional visual arts now here is a cowing of a cow at vaidyanathishwara temple in talakadu karnataka this is a cow which is uh releasing milk onto shivalinga and the cow clearly has a hump okay this is from madukeshwara temple banvasi karnataka right we can see a cow there in between krishna on the left and uh narayana samita uh um uh, shri devi budevi right shri devi budevi shri narayana is there and in the middle we see a cow it's feeding its calf and the cow has a hump right we can see very clearly here okay here is from airavateshwara temple kumbakonam tamil nadu we can see very clearly here is a very clever uh a carving if you see from one side it looks like an elephant if you look from the other side it looks like a bull and the bull has a kakut right it has it fulfills all the criteria mentioned in the shastras again in kumbakonam tamil nadu we have a a, a gopala who is a uh milking the cow and the cow has a hump again virabhadra temple lepakshi andhra pradesh there's a you can see a small calf here drinking the milk and the cow also has a hump okay and he has a very beautiful stone sculpture which is in uh, missouri uh, united states uh in the uh, nelson atkins museum of art kansas city so here we have this very beautiful a uh, stone sculpture of kamadhenu which is surabi right so we can see very clearly it is all jeweled and the kakud is very beautifully covered with jewels right so uh moving on again this is from rindavan from bankabihari temple in the courtyard of bankabihari temple i believe everyone have been to this temple in the courtyard right on a raised platform we will see uh the uh, sculpture of a cow right feeding its calf and that cow has a hump right it has all the features mentioned in shastras moving on i'm just moving on quickly so from the visual arts also we can see very clearly right from the traditional visual arts actually even from the mughal era paintings even the muslim painters knew what a cow looked like they drew the cows according to the shastric description 
right? All the uh, painters from the Mughal era, right? I, I, I'm not included here, but just I'm just showing uh, the only the sculptures, right? And then we move on to the analysis of evidences from deity worship tradition, right? Let's look at deity worship tradition. Now here, from Sri Radharaman Temple, uh, the very arguably the most famous temple in Vrindavan, right? Uh, of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, this temple we see here there are, there are cows, right? The cows here, if you zoom in, you will see all the cows have hump. They, have, they fulfill all the five criteria, right? So the cows that are put under uh, Radharaman are not, you know, the cows that don't fulfill the criteria. These are the cows that, uh, the Surabi cows that, that are mentioned in Shastras, right? You must, it's very important to look at these ancient uh, temples, right? Because these are started by Goswamis. The very fire that is used in these temples, right? The, the, the fire for cooking is the same fire that was started 500 years ago, they are maintaining the same fire. So things are not changed, right? Everything is the same thing. Okay. Then here, very famous deities in Jaipur, Shishi Radha Govinda, right? This is the personal deity of Rupa Goswami. And behind Radha Govinda, you always see the Surabi cow, right? And the Surabi cow, here we can't see the full features because uh, the decorations are, are of Govinda, the flowers on him. So we can't see, but during Mangala Arati, we can very clearly see Surabi with a calf and she ha and she has a very beautiful hump there, right? Govinda, Govinda, the master of the senses, the master of the cows and the cow right behind him. This is Rupa Goswami's personal deity. The cow fulfills the definition given by Patanjali Muni. Going even further back, this is Madhvacharya's most famous uh, uh, Udupi Krishna, right, from Udupi, right, his personal deities, uh, which worship for many hundreds of years. So these deities is said to be even worshipped by Rukmini, right. Now, one day, there's an Alankara where they put the Surabi cow there, and the Surabi cow has a clear hump, right. So all these traditional temples where the deity worship tradition is not changed, we find the cows that are put with Krishna, they all have the features. Okay. So why are we taking so much of time to discuss this? Because we have to get it clear from all angles, from Shastric texts, from the carving in the temples, uh, which is also based on Shastra again, right? That is based on uh, Shilpa Shastra. And then from deity worship tradition, which is based on Agamas and everything, right? Everything is based uh, all the uh, cows conform. They do not, right? There's no, there's, there's internal consistency, right? There is no difference. Okay. So this is the point. So thank you very much, Prabhu's and Mataji's. Hare Krishna. Uh, moving to the next uh, part will be uh, Parishit Prabhu. We're getting the views from Ayurveda. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. So I think, uh, dear Prabhu's and Mataji's, it is uh, quite clear. Uh, what is the definition of cow? According to Shastra, cow means the important key point here is hump, kakuta, right? So that's what makes it different eh? between a uh, ordinary, uh, you know, between our you know Western cows and this purebred Indian cows. So the, the key point here is whatever uh, uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, description about cows in Shastra. Uh, whatever glories of the milk product and its byproduct in Shastra is referring to this cow, the cow which fulfills the criteria of the definition of cow, which have the five features, and the most important thing is the hum, kakuda, right? So now the next question is, Prabhu, so are you telling that the other cows are not cows? It's an important question right now, right? Because as Prabhu presented, according to Shastra, anything which have that five features is cow. Yes. So first of all, you must understand. Yes, the other cows, we doesn't have a hump. It is also a cow, right? But my, our point here is uh, whatever cows described in the Vedic scripture, it is referring to these cows. Whatever cows glorified in the Ayurvedic Shastra for the health benefit, it is described these cows, these uh, cows which possess a hump. So that must be clear. 
So next, let's move on into the Ayurvedic Shastra. Uh, we all know it's a well-known fact that Ayurvedic Shastra glorifies the benefit of milk, ghee, right? So let's let's look into the opinions of the uh, Ayurveda Acharyas. Right? So first, uh, this is Dr. Pratap Chauhan. So he is, uh, you know, uh, Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery uh, from Delhi University. So this is his statement. You know, he says that A2 is made from pure breed. He is introducing us. Now we are speaking about his term A2, as I mentioned earlier. What is this A2? A2 is nothing but simply referring to the cow as uh, mentioned by Prabhu, which fulfills the five criteria and prominently must have the hump. So that is the meaning A2, which our scientific community, they are calling it A2. Why A2? Because the protein component, when they see in the microscope, they say that the pure breed cows, examples like the Indian cows, African cows, which has hump, they have this A2 protein. While the Western cows, and when they look into the microscope, they are telling there is mixed protein, A1 and A2 mixed. Right? That's what you are going to look go through now. So clearly what we can understand Ayurvedic Shastra is referring to the uh, native Indian cows, right? Next, this is Dr. Vasanta Kumari from Kerala, Ayurveda. Same thing, you know, uh, she insists that ghee is a must-have food, right? Ghee is a must-have food. And she uh, clearly establishes that, you know, this grihitam, grihitam means ghee, grihitam is referring to the A2, which is the uh, pure breed cows okay and next uh, this is from uh, dr dandwantri <clears throat> he is a ayurvedic practitioner in salem right so i actually uh, but quite fortunate to meet him personally uh, last month i went and have a discussion on cows with him you know on all these uh, milk different types of milk the benefits and so on so even he says there's no doubt that whatever glorification and benefit of milk ghee mentioned in ayurvedic shastra is referring to the desi cows there's a different right it is not there is supermarket milk or ghee which have that benefit those benefits right so that is a point here there is some difference that is what we are trying to establish here this is the fact right so even dr danvantri is a lecturer he's lecturing on this uh you know ayurvedic right so next and uh, this is dr brahmanda nayak he is one of the best doctor in bangalore and he says desi ghee is best for brain and amazingly, uh, later when we will we'll go to the journals, they will say actually ghee is bad for your brain. Milk is bad for your brain. You know that uh, milk can cause heart attack. Uh, ghee can cause heart attack. But here we are establishing, you know, it is good for your brain, heart. Right? So, so what's the problem here? Yes. So those goodness is referring to the desi cows. Right? So this, this we must understand very clearly. And next... <coughs> This is Dr. Tejas Prajapati. Uh, he is an uh, allopathy doctor. He is a consultant in toxicologist in Gujarat. You know, he has his own YouTube channel. And he, do you know what is his recommendation? He's recommending his, uh, you know, his followers to take only authorized, authorized pure Desikaogi. Right? So this is the point here. All the experts, they are pointing towards Desikaos. Shastra is pointing towards Desi cows, right? So this is the point here. And yes, this is my good friend, Mr. Kidma, right? He is a, a board certified nutritionist, right? So he's a professional nutritionist. And, you know, he's from a uh, you know, non-Indian background. He doesn't know anything about Indian culture, Vedic culture, Ayurveda. But he is the first one to contact me when I was distributing this ghee. And he was excited. And he said, hey, hey, bro, Please, please give me this ghee. I need this ghee. You know, I want to distribute to my clients. A Chinese uh, origin uh, person, Mr. Kitma, uh, non-Vedic background. So they know these things. The benefit of this, uh, desi cow ghee, right? So in fact, he is uh, even uh, explaining here that uh, all those uh, supermarket ghee, supermarket milks, which is mixed of A1 and A2 protein, can cause a lot of health problem. We will look into that. We will look into that. Right? Okay. So I think it is uh, quite clear enough. 
right i think we can stop the discussion here actually now because shastrically we already establish clear cut what a cow is uh, whatever benefits referred in the ayurvedic shastra is referring to those cows so we have shastra pramana and that is the best right we can stop right but right the, the, the thing is when we analyze into the modern scientific evidences then uh, we can see that even those modern scientific evidences are pointing towards Shastra. So whatever the points mentioned in Shastra, mentioned by His Grace Raja Parishir Prabhu just now, was supported by our scientific studies. So therefore, we should speak about it. Therefore, we should uh, you know, uh, discuss about this because it is favorable with Shastra. It is in favorable with Shastra. So we can see here, uh, Srila Prabhupada's letter to Tushta Krishna, Hyderabad. We do not reject or accept anything until it is seen in the light of our Krishna consciousness movement. Anything favorable for Krishna consciousness, we accept and anything unfavorable, we have to reject. Right. So shall we proceed? Because it is in favorable of Krishna consciousness, in favorable of a Shastra. Right. So, so this is the point. Right. And number two, right. This is uh, one of the important purposes of ISKCON. Right? Prabhupada have established uh, seven purposes of ISKCON and this is one of the uh, to propagate consciousness of Krishna as it is revealed in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavadam. So that's what we are doing right now. Right? So I, I mean it is it is quite uh, foolish to say that Prabhu we don't accept uh, material evidence, we don't accept the scientific community uh, and we are, we are you know uttering such statement by using internet 5G and WhatsApp which is the byproduct of material knowledge. So this is such a contraindication, right? So we have to be balanced, right? Whatever is supported by Shastra, we have to look into it. Not that we blindly reject, oh, this is material science. Oh, this is bogus. Oh, these are atheistic scientists. No. Yeah, they are, they are atheistic. They are rascals. Robert have said that. But when it is supporting our Shastra, we should look into it. We should preach about it. So this is the Krishna consciousness movement, as Prabhupada taught us, right? So let's go into the journals. So you see, this is one of the important journals from the Nutrition Journal, BMC. So let me just summarize to you, right? So basically what they are trying to establish here is, okay, this is a Chinese study. It was done in China, right? So when they say traditional milk is referring to the supermarket milk, because according to them, uh, traditional milk means the supermarket easily available milk. So when do the comparison between the pure breed A2 and also the supermarket, our Western cows, you know, they find out that this uh, supermarket milk, which is consisting of A1 and A2 protein, causes a lot of health problem. You can look into the conclusion here, right? So A1 beta casein is referring to the Western cows, and they are clearly telling here that it increases the gastrointestinal inflammation, worsening the PD3 symptom. What is PD3? Post-dairy digestive disorder. So basically, by taking milk, you are damaging your gut health, you know, decreasing cognitive processing speed and accuracy. You're, 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 you're becoming more dumb. Literally, that's what they're telling. By consuming milk, you're becoming dumb. Can we accept that? You know, Shastra says we should consume milk. So how are you going to solve the puzzle? Then we have to analyze the Shastra. Then we have to pick what is the point here, right? Not that we blindly reject the scientific community. So they are establishing here that the pure breed cows are superior. The pure breed cow doesn't cause any health problem. This we have to accept, right? Next, very interesting study by the PubMed. So this study basically establishes that this supermarket milk, whatever we are taking right now, milk which consists of A1 beta casein, uh, you know, have uh, you know give rise to the risk of ischemic heart disease type 1 diabetes basically all your pancreas cells are gone beta cells are gone so this is the point here so can you imagine that you're going to get a heart attack you're going to get a diabetes by consuming milk but not the ordinary not the desi cow milk but this is referring to the supermarket milk the western cows it's not i am telling this is the words of the scientific community next right this is a very important book a devil in the milk uh, by kate woodford so Kate Woodford, he's a professor uh, from uh, New Zealand, right? From the cow, uh, what do you call that? The capital city of cow, New Zealand. 
<laughs> so you know and he is establishing it clearly that uh, all these uh, western cows he is a westerner he is a white people you know white person and he is establishing that all the western cows are actually causing problems serious illness you can see here right uh, including what heart disease diabetes autism schizophrenia you know what schizophrenia schizophrenia means paithyam gila <laughs> that's what they call it so basically you can become mad <laughs> illusion you know all these things will happen to you schizo right and even he established here that you know all milk was once a2 until genetic mutation happened right so basically he is informing us that generally huh, huh, earlier earlier there's only one cow which is surabi cows <laughs> as how shastra said you know as how krishna heard the cows Sura, surabi abhipalayantam so the, that's the only cows which exist right but currently what happened due to our greed uh, want to slaughter the cows for meat so we have come out with genetic mutation hybrid cows this is the problem right so this is clearly addressed by the professor here and he have given 100 evidences 100 journals to establish that when you drink that such western cow milk you're going to die this is the conclusion from them right so we have to address these things we have to see what they are trying to say even among the scientific community you know they are very heated debate debate going on huh? so a1 a2 milk does it matter and even they are telling yes it does matter right and they are establishing that you know a1 can cause inflammation you know is disturbing your gut health you know and now we are very much concerned about gut health huh? according to ayurvedic shastra all the diseases begin from your gut when your gut health is gone everything is gone right so this must be very clear of course i understand there are some other journals ambiguous studies which establishes there's no difference between a1 and a2 they are there but but uh, there are much more journals which are supporting that a2 is superior compared to a1 and a2 which is the supermarket milk so this we must understand right so yeah let me speed up right so you see this is also establishing here that by consuming this uh, supermarket milk western cow milk we are at risk of getting autism so our children who are exposed to formula milk generally all formula milk are coming from this uh, western cows and you know this can give rise to psychomotor development they basically they are the third Basically, they are terbantu. That's in simple term of Malay, right? So they can develop into autism, <coughs> right? So and Shastra says milk is a superfood. So how to understand this? That's how we should see into the Shastra and Ayurveda Shastra and Ayurveda Acharyas. They are establishing the real benefit is coming from the desi cows. Okay, and this is Indian journals. So whatever I spoke just now is all the researchers by the white people you know and and why they have to support our our cows why they have to support the a2 right because that is a fact you know they are not biased there's no any biases there all these people are white people and they are pointing towards uh, desi cows they are pointing towards shastra and establishing that a2 cow is the best indian cow is the best right and now our indian studies they are also establishing all the ill effects of these western cows a1 milk right and even they are suggesting that you know there is a urgent need to expand the indian breed of cows you know our indian community in tamil nadu in india they have to breed you know to uh, herd these types of cows original breed gear sahiwal those cows indian cows right even they said we should come up with a test whether to see whether this is a western cows or you know indian cows so this is their suggestion huh, from the Indian studies, right? So same here also same. This is a uh, journals, uh, you know, research done in uh, Scandinavia, and they are establishing here that you know uh, kids associated with uh, you know exposed to cow milk, uh, which is the supermarket milk, they are at risk of diabetes, type one diabetes. Type one diabetes means what? Uh, referring to the diabetes you get during the young age, you know. Uh, it is very much prominent in a children who took so much of cow milk. So what types of milk is this? The Western milk, 
the A1 milk, right? So this is the conclusion, right? And uh, interestingly, we can see here, yeah, this is a nutritional uh, journal by Michel J. Sattler. And he's establishing a very important point. Uh, the A2 milk, our Indian breed milk, is same with our human breast milk. You know, the structural, the protein structural is equivalent to human breast milk, Thai pal. So, so Ibu, whereas the Western cows and human breast milk is not compatible. Right? You see, can you see the difference or not? This is what Shastra said. Same thing. And when you consume these types of milk, you're exposing yourself to diabetes, as we discussed, diabetes, respiratory problem, autism, schizophrenia, and so on. Right? Right? So, and we can see another evidences that human breast will contain A2. So A2 means what? The desi cow, Indian cow. Right? So this is the point. Right? And then another interesting point here, you see, uh, we, all, we all usually, you know, uh, heard you know, that you don't take a lot of ghee. Ghee will cause you heart attack. Ghee will cause you heart problem. Right? But you see, there's a study done, you know, uh, in a population of rural population in India, when they consume ghee, it is said that it doesn't have heart attack. Lower prevalence of coronary artery disease. How is that? Because they are taking what ghee? The ghee originating from the Indian cows. Right? So when you when you take the Western cow ghee, definitely you're going to get heart attack. This is what a study is showing. Right? So we have to understand these things. Right? So yes, I can speak much more on these things, but I this is a reference. You can screenshot this and you re read on your own. There are hundreds of journals which establish that A2 is superior, our pure breed, original breed is superior compared to the Western cows. And it is synchronized with Shastra as Prabhu presented. Right? So now let's look into the evidences from ISKCON. Huh? So yes, Haribol. <laughs> so what is Haribol? So, you know, amazingly, Haribol is huh, uh, propagating the goodness of A2 milk, our desi cow milk. And who is behind this Haribol? Behind this Haribol is Govardhan Eco Village. It's an initiative project of Govardhan Eco Village. And the in charge for Govardhan Eco Village is His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. So Maharaj is propagating this A2 milk, A2 cows. And we can see here, uh, you know, A2 milk, A2 cows. And this is a launching. This is a launching of uh, this Haribol product, right? And we can see all the important authorities from ISKCON is present here, right? We can see His Holiness uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami. He is a GBC for ISKCON Vrindavan and various ISKCON in India, right? We can see Rajavilas Prabhu, TOVP Vice Chairman is sitting down there. We can see Gauranga Prabhu and we can see ISKCON Juhu TP, uh, Brija Haridas Prabhu. So all these are highest authority in ISKCON. So they are propagating A2, right? Desi cow milk, right? And even they are putting in their website, what is the advantage as we discussed? What is the benefits of A2? What is the disadvantage of A1? You know, they're speaking by the hum as Prabhu discussed, right? And they're also promoting their A2 ghee. Right? So this is the evidences, right? Among our ISKCON, we are speaking, right? And even they are, you know, propagating that all their cows been tested with DNA. And this DNA is a, you know, it's a test, it's a material uh, scientific test, right? They are using that to establish A2 or not, A1 or not. Is it A1 or A2? Is it a fake, right? So like that. And another into important point here, eh? Om Sri Surabi campaign. So this cow protection campaign eh, was pro propagated by a very well-known person. Eh? When we speak about cow, definitely, uh, you know, His Holiness Bhakti Raghav Maharaj is a well-known person. Even before he begins the lecture, he will start with Om Surabhi Namaha, right? So, yeah, Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, he is a very important person. He is in charge for ISKCON Devi Varnashrama Ministry. So, basically, he is the authority for Varnashrama Dharma for ISKCON. And he is instructing us, you know, despite from protecting mother cow, especially the Indian cows. That's what his short-term objective are, right? And also he is asking us to fully cook in ghee. 
Don't use any refined oil. We can see here, cooking in ghee. Only take milk from the protected cows, right? And you know, and I'd like to highlight this very important point from uh, His Holiness Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, long-term objective. We can see here, to educate organization and government about the merits of A2 category milk uh, as found in the indigenous breed, desi cows, and demerits of A1. Basically, that's what we are doing right now. Uh, we are following the instruction of His Holiness Bhakti Raghav Maharaj. Uh, we are propagating what is the benefit of A2 ghee and what is the demerits of A1 ghee. So this is the instruction of Bhakti Raghav Maharaj. Uh, he's in charge for Varnashrama in ISKCON. Right. So for devotees who want more information on the indigenous cows, you can go to the website. Uh, a lot of informations are there. Right. So, and this is from ISKCON Kolkata. ISKCON Kolkata is now promoting A to Ghee using the traditional method. This is from ISKCON Kanpur. ISKCON Kanpur is also promoting A to Ghee. Huh? This is from the uh, YouTube website. Right? Well, yeah. Well, and okay, let's see from other sources. Yes, Ramat, the phone so, hey, 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 Krishna, hey, please mute your mics. Uh, audio, Matajis, Prabhus. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we all know Prabhupada is. You know, very much fond of Tirupati Devastaram, Tirupati Temple, right? Prabhupada uh, used to say, we should follow, uh, we follow the management of Tirupati Devastaram, TTD, Tirupati Tirumala Devastaram, right? So when we look into the book, this is a book on uh, Mother Cow by TTD. So we can see here, even they are establishing that from ancient time, there only one cow. What is a cow? Desi cow, right? Surabi cow. And even they are also establishing that hump is the important criteria for a cow, right? And they also they are addressing the adverse effect of A1 milk, the Western cow milk. This is from TTD, Tripadi Tirumala Devastanam, right? So putting it all together, right? So now we have so much of information coming in, right? Uh, from the Shastrikal point of view, it's very clear. From the ISKCON side of view, it is very clear. From the journal material side of you, very clear, right? So now, how to apply this in Malaysia? How are we going to put this into a practical life? Huh? Practical uh, solution for everything. How to choose the best milk? So I'm giving you the formula, very simple formula, right? So first, we need to look into the cow status. That is the first criteria, okay? Very important, whether the cow is protected or not protected. That is the first criteria. One point for that, the most important criteria. Next, we need to look into the cow's breed, whether it is a native breed or high breed. Uh, native means our original pure breed, and high breed means the example like the Western cow, JC cows. Next, we need to look into the milk status, <clears throat> whether the milk is you know pasteurized, you know whether it is heated in a high temperature, you know how it is processed. We need to look into this. This is a very important factor also. And then we need to look into the method, how they, pro they produce the milk product, how they produce the ghee, whether they are using the industrial method, using machine, or they are using the bilona. There is a big difference in it. Right? So I hope it is clear. This is the fourth checkpoint to choose the best milk. Right? And I will also just uh, explain a little bit about this, you know, point number three and four, milk status. Right? So, you know, the best is pasteurization, right? Prabhupada advises, according to Ayurvedic Shastra also, that we should boil the milk, the fresh milk from the cow, protected cow, boil it. When it is boiling and foaming, we leave it for two, three minutes, and then it's good to drink. That is the best method, right? And then we have other, all, all these methods, UHT, pasteurization, all these things are not recommended. The reason is why? Because one, it is heated in high temperature, it can last long. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, anything that more than three hours is not fit for consumption. So what to speak about a milk which is packed and kept for years, for months. Right? And also there are a lot of side effects uh, by doing this UHT pasteurization, at the ultra high temperature. Right? So this is not recommended. <coughs> right. So yes, and point number four, you know, how do you actually get the ghee, the byproduct of milk? So the best way is we should use the traditional method. It is called Billona method, right? 
So what is this Billona method? Basically, you are churning, you know, Yeshoda Amma method, Yeshoda Mada method, churning, churning method, right? So that is how you get the benefit. When you use the Yeshoda Amma method and use the right cow, then you hit the jackpot, the best ghee, right? So this is how you should do, do the ghee. Yeah? From the milk, you culture it to yogurt, and then you make it a but you, you churn to butter and you heat it up. Right? But the problem here, right, with the uh, our current ghee, our supermarket ghee is that you can see they don't culture it. They immediately centrif uh, centrifuge and they make it a cream and they heat it to ghee. Right, so this process can cause a lot of health problem. All our ghee right now in supermarket undergoes this process. So that is why we are speaking about A2, desi cow ghee, traditional ghee, right? So all the supermarket ghee has a chemical hazard, uh, which have all these chemical I stated here, right? Which can cause a lot of health problem, name it, heart disease, uh, cancer. All these things are there, right? So next, so what is the final recommendation? <clears throat> so Prabhu, so we are in Malaysia, Prabhu. So please advise something practical, Prabhu. So many of the devotees might ask, what is the practical application here, right? So the final recommendation here is, okay, the first criteria I see, the best milk is milk from the protected desi cow. That's the best. We should accept this fact. If there is a milk from the desi cow, that is the best. The second best is milk from protected non desi cow. Okay. So let's say now in Malaysia. So we are having, a, you know, an example like in our Lanchang farm. We have desi cows. So if we can get milk from Lanchang farm, then that is the best if compared to supermarket. Because Lanchang farm is protected cows and our supermarket is unprotected cows. Right. So that is the best. But when you compare within the protected Western cows and also protected desi cow, then we have to accept the fact that the desi cow milk is right? So this is the point. Right? So, and the most worst milk we can do, we can get is milk from the unprotected non desi cows, right? So this is the point. So, you know, we understand that, you no, know, Krishna. And Prabhupada always advises to always give the best to Krishna, right? Always offer the best to Krishna. So therefore, you know, we should try. We should try to give the best, right? And so let's uh, wrap it up. So what is the conclusion here, right? So the first conclusion here is that Krishna loves every living being. We accept that, right? <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam said that, uh, Prabhupada said in the lecture of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, that Krishna, he is free. He loves everyone. He loves the devotee. He loves the cows. He loves the calves, he loves the trees, fruits, flowers, water, everything. Right? Because everything is manifestation of his energy. So we admit the fact that Krishna loves all cow, right? But we also must admit the fact that there's a different. Huh? There's a different, right? So next, all cows are our mother, irrespective of their breed and geographical origin. They must be protected and cared. Yes, dear Prabhus and Matajis. Very important point. So it uh, doesn't mean that when uh, Shastrically this A2 cow is superior, all other cows we should neglect. No, according to our geographical location, like in Malaysia, we are having only Western cows. So we should protect it. We should breed it. We should offer the milk to Krishna. This is the understanding. It is not that we blindly reject, right? So, but when the question raises, Right? Which is the superior milk? Then we have to discriminate accordingly, right? So that's why I'm highlighting here that, however, that doesn't mean that all cows are the same. Huh? We must accept that there are different gradation of cows. This is a fact. Right? So don't come and you know blindly give an argument that everything is same, Prabhu. We don't discriminate. De devotees don't discriminate. This is Mayavadam. Huh? This is Mayavadam, Advaita. So we are achintya beda beda. We must accept the similarities. We must accept the difference. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. So we should apply that into this uh, cow issues, right? So next, an acceptance of different gradation of cow is not equivalent to the acceptance of slaughter of low grade cows. Yes. So you know there is a you know 
there is some uh, Indian politician which propagate that, you know, only Indian cows, both Indigos should be protected. All the Western cows should be slaughtered. So we are not in support of that. We are against that. Because Prabhupada says, right? Because Prabhupada says, you know, we should protect all cows, right? So, yes, because it is part of our four regulatory principles. We don't even kill uh, insects. We don't kill even, uh, you know, other living entities. What to speak of mother cow? No way, right? It should be protected. This is our understanding, right? So advocacy for killing any kind of animal is demonic. What to speak of killing cows? Yes. So this is the basic understanding, basic uh, four regulative principles. No killing, no animal killing, right? <laughs> so among the cows, the one that have physical properties resembling surabi is the best. This is the conclusion, right? So the conclusion is, if you ask me, which is the best cows? Surabi cows is supported by Guru Shaudan Shastra. This is the fact we should accept, right? But that doesn't mean that the Western cows are to be neglected, to be slaughtered. No, it should be respected. It should be taken care, right? But when we, uh, you know, have an argument on which is the best, which produce the best quality of milk, then we have to, you know, <laughs> we have to digest the fact. We have to digest the fact that Indian cows are superior, right? Uh, right? So no problem. We should accept the fact. So that is, uh, you know, that is the conclusion from our presentation here. So always endeavor to give Krishna the best of everything. Give Krishna the best milk, best curd, best butter, and best ghee, right? So this is the point, right? So if someone can afford it financially, right, then we should actually offer the best to Krishna. So that is my suggestion, right? So that is why I'm, uh, you know, uh, taking up the instruction. And also uh, from the, you know, uh, Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, one of the goal is to propagate these uh, benefits of uh, desi cow ghee, desi cow's benefits, right? The byproducts. So we are, uh, we are doing that right now, right? So yes, before we end, before we end, this is a very nice, beautiful pictures uh, of Srila Prabhupada with his cows. Uh? This is a uh, Western cows uh? Uh, in New Govardhan, uh, New Govardhan, right? In New Govardhan, Australia. And we can see yeah, Prabhupada loves these cows. This particular cow, the black, yeah, black colored cow is Kaliya. You know, she is a Jesse cow. But Prabhupada loves it. So yeah, because in Australia, that is the best you can get. So what you can do? You protect the cow and offer the milk to Krishna. We accept it. Right? So this is the conclusion. Right? So all cows, yeah, Krishna loves all cows. We accept the fact. At the same time, there's some difference when it comes to the quality of milk. So this is the conclusion, right? So thank you very much, uh, dear Prabhus and Matajis for your time. So I'll open for a QA and a session, right? If there's any question, answers, or some disagreement, please, you may uh, ask the question via chat box or even through our, you know, uh, audio. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, and actually I have, uh, you know, few questions into my chat box. So, uh, yes, uh, Tinesh Prabhu, how, how shall we go about it? Okay, I think I can address the question. Okay, the first question here uh, from Ramananda Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, cows in Malaysia is A1 or A2? Yes, Prabhu, as we discussed in Malaysia, uh, we are having Jesse cows, right? So all our cows are Western cows, right? And and another message from Elogan Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu, how to contact you to buy the, yes, no problem Prabhu. Uh, we can you just let me know. We will try to arrange for you, right? Okay. And next question from uh, Rupeswara Narahari Das Prabhu. Any attempt to import ghee from India, which is A2 origin? I am sure all sent in Malaysia will purchase it if it's available. So thank you very much, Prabhu, for your question. Uh, yes, Prabhu, A2 ghee is available right now. Uh, you know, I am trying to bring it, uh, importing it from India for the benefit of our devotees with a very minimal profit. We are doing that, Prabhu. So if you need one, please, uh, you know, uh, drop me your uh, number into my chat box. I will, you know, or you can message Simeshwara Prabhu, you know, you can go through him, right? So, and next, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, ask uh, Simeshwara Prabhu, Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu, is there anything Prabhu you would like to add? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Prabhu, Prabhu Hare Krishna, can you hear me now? Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, one minute Prabhu, uh, 
let Shimesh Prabhu would like to say something. After that, we'll continue. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for Shimesh Prabhu's comments. Okay, Ngala. then we'll continue. Okay. Yes, Hare please. Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Pada, Hare Krishna Prashta, 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 Namacharya pada ini, tak ikut pada ini, guru kata dam dah ini, negara gram tak ini. Nama Om Vishnu pada ini, Krishna Prasthan ibu tali. Semudah bakti bedam tesua menit nama ini. Nama Sri Saraswati Dewi Guru Wani Prachar ini. Ini bersesu sunyi wadi pas cete star ini. Jai Sri Krishna Caitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Garada Sri Sri Guru Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा प्रभु कैन यू हियर मी यस प्रभु एम आई ऑडिबल यस प्रभु या सो थैंक यू वेरी मच वीरा परीक्षित प्रभु एंड राजा परीक्षित राई थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग दिस सब्जेक्ट ऑन मिल्क on cows. Uh, one thing that I, uh, I, I uh, you, you have sort of covered quite broadly, I would say. Uh, but something that uh, the fundamentals of uh, cow care, uh, though in this particular, we are trying to zoom into A1, A2 milk, desi cows versus Western cows or other cows. I think we have gone one before the fundamentals of uh, cow care, as mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, we would have missed a lot on the bhakti concept of cow's milk. So there will need uh, more forums on this, uh, that we do not uh, miss those very important aspect of uh, the uh, concept of bhakti. For example, Srila Prabhupada said that uh, if we protect the cows, we can have the facility of drinking milk. Now, many of us, we want it very convenient convenient to just import A2 milk, import desi milk, desi ghee. This is convenience. And it is also commercial. Generally, Srila Prabhupada encouraged uh, localized projects, localized farms, localized radiatras, localized or oh, everything, you know. For example, we can't import Lord Jagannath from India to here and have a Jagannath Radhyatra or import the card. We have our local Radhyatras. Similarly, we have to give importance, and especially even Ayurveda practitioners have mentioned when asked about A to A1 milk. Some of them have said that we, we like to stay silent and we would like to say that the milk from your local bread cows are the best. This is also mentioned by Ayurveda science. So I think the fundamentals, uh, we have gone above the fundamentals of cow care, cow protection. And this, is, I think, is very, very important because Srila Prabhupada has countless times mentioned that uh, the cows must be happy. And the less the commercial aspect of milk, the better it is. In other words, Srila Prabhupada wanted that householders to have cows. Or you have small communities, the temple should have a farm to support the temple. So these will bring about the best milk, not poison milk. The moment the, the commercialism starts, what happens is there will be compromises. There will be compromises in many, like for example, the A2 milk, the company of A2, they started off with A2 company and then they changed it to A2 milk in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. And then they made many studies and then they changed their studies. And uh, so like that, 
And as far as uh, scientists are concerned, of course, in the Western world, it is not a new thing that uh, people hire scientists to say things. I always say my grandmother is the best scientist because she told me to take uh, coconut oil. And in the 80s, we had scientists telling us to take palm oil. Thousands of acres of palm uh, coconut plantations were closed down because of the Western scientists. So we have to be careful about the science that we are getting, uh, whether it's Western, whether even Indian sciences. Are these science scientists actually they are being, uh, uh, studying the Vedic methods of uh, cow care? I think this is the fundamentals that we have to give importance and credence for these uh, methods. And uh, we shouldn't take the shortcut convenient route of just uh, importing milk. Uh, maybe for now it is good, but if we do not attempt to care for cows, I think it is a big failure on the part of the full yatra. The community has to be responsible to take care of cows on the holistic aspect not only cows, agriculture as well. When you talk about cows, you talk about land. When you talk about land, you talk about agriculture. And we talk about cow land, then Krishna is there. So there is Goloka, there is Godruma, it's all Go. And if daily you're with cows, you chant the names of the cows, then you will know who is Gopal, who is Govinda. You're always chanting. At least at the time of death, you may call up to Govinda and Gopal. So, uh, to make it short, I like to say that the fundamentals were missing. We went into the science and we went into the other aspects in the Shastra. But Srila Prabhupada's fundamentals were missed out. And uh, I think this is the most important aspect uh, that we need to cover when it comes to milk of cows. That we must make sure that they are protected. And that we must make sure we are party to the protection. That we are party to the protection. Just getting something which is uh, good is not good enough. But we have to do something that we are party to the care of cows, party to the protection, party to the glorification of cows, party to uh, land and agriculture. Without this, it will be a big mistake. So, But there will be a big discussion that I'm just saying it in the gist that this is very, very important for everyone, everyone, not just householders, because cows means they help us in every way. Okay, so I, I'll just stop with that. Uh, but I thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and uh, uh, in hope that we can have further uh, 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 discussion and see how Malaysia's Yatra can get more involved in actual work. Taking the uh, uh, George Bernard Shaw saying that those who know do, those who don't know speak. Those who know do, those who do not know speak. So we shouldn't be like that, that we just speak. We must actually do it. Our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, they all looked after cows. So similarly, we should also go back to that history and how good it was during that times. So let us also go in that direction. And uh, while having good me, good ghee, good milk is good, but I think without party to protection of cows, party to care for cows, we, we will be we are actually somewhat blind i would say hari krishna thank you very much again hari krishna prabhu hari krishna. Yeah. Hari krishna. thank you thank you for your input prabhu so i do agree i do 100 percent agree to your points that our ultimate goal is to establish this uh, farm community varnashrama community so yeah i got the point uh, yes, that's what even I mentioned, Prabhu, that, you know, our first uh, thing is that any cow which is protected from our local farm, that is the best milk. So, you know, we have already established that, Prabhu. I do agree with that. Right? 
but when when there's a there's a question raised right like among the milk among the cow which is the best then when shastra says surabi and when the you know uh, ayurvedic shastra says you know this breeds of milk this bit of cows then yeah that's what i'm pointing out so there's this, according to gradation this is the best we can give to krishna but of course uh, when we have a local farm and we can take also from that so not a problem so and of course you know by you know simply importing we are not doing any justice also because our long term goal to establish a local community a local devotee and we herd cows farm grow crops so that is our ultimate goal yes i think we should move you know we should work on that i do agree with that point prabhu thank you very much prabhu for the info yeah. anything else prabhu yeah, yeah i think i think it's a very valid point prabhu that yeah. uh, we have to become self sufficient and at at present uh, we in iskon we are not self sufficient which means we if something happens right in the supply chains uh, or vegetables or in the milk or ghee then we are finished you will not have ghee for krishna you will not have uh, uh, milk for krishna you will not have vegetables for krishna you will have nothing for us first of all so therefore uh, the point that you've raised is extremely important but the whole purpose of the uh, discussion is just to objectively point out when we just discuss from just from the aspect of cow right just looking at cows which is the best cow right which is the best milk which is not disease causing right because uh, they have, they are they they are growing numbers of vegans in iskon who are uh, saying that actually you shouldn't take milk right there are, there's a growing number of voices who are saying that you don't take milk because milk has ill effects but the problem is it's not problem with the milk but is the problem with the source of the milk yes. so that is what we have to tackle the same thing like you said prabhu taking uh, your grandmother told you that you take groundnut milk uh, groundnut oil and Pardon. not of uh, course coconut oil and not uh, palm oil so that is why we follow what shastra says and then if there are supporting evidences from science we will use it just like shri prabhupad always used whatever the scientists say if if it supports shastric point of view otherwise we reject it we don't bother with that right there may be some devotees who are not fully convinced in shastras we know there are different categories of devotees kanishta madhyama and uttama kanishtas are they not convinced you said jay shay shastra not everyone is convinced so if we show some scientific evidence immediately they become interested oh oh okay this is the point so yes prabhu uh, we 100% agree that we have to come to the point of being self sufficient as a yatra and we should be part of it not just speak about it um and uh, uh we have you have started it prabhu you are the uh you know pioneer here and uh, we 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 <coughs> simply want to uh, try and help you to uh you know so that not only in north Uh, in south we can have in north east and west because again for the milk to come all the way that again it's a uh, lot of cost and to produce a ghee we need a lot of milk so the we really need a lot of cows and that can only be solved when we have our own cows in, in community as we, as you have said before right every local community probably every house uh, should have their own cows mm-hmm. and um, in um, uh, probably you know prabhu in your new gordon farm they used to have jersey cows but now they have they are having this desi cows they have imported desi cows because of this of course australia they know more about cows and when i was visiting their website actually now they are promoting their own desi cows which they have you know there's a pure breed and they are cultivating those so probably we can also think of bringing in those uh, kind of cows and studying our own community here and uh, and we can get it for much cheaper price you know the 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 a to g is so expensive it is out of uh, our range to pay for those kinds of uh, g you know so but we don't want to take poison so whenever we can we should try to uh, also get to this so yes prabhu um, we need a lot more uh, uh, forums on Uh, other topics so at least we know now something very basics about cows and uh we know what is the actual cow that shastra speaks about what the ayurveda shastra speaks about so this is the whole point of the discussion right there are many many more things to be discussed regarding how to protect cows <coughs> the principles foundations and so on so yes prabhu so thank you very much prabhu
Okay. At, at, at the same time, uh, Srila Prabhupada was also a very uh, pragmatic in his, uh, the way he brought his con. So we even have example of Srila Prabhupada advocating to bring the cow, which gives a lot of milk to Mayapur. He didn't want to import yes. the milk. Rather, he said, uh, bring the cow and we should look after the cow. So there are also many aspects to it. If we need a lot of milk, Prabhupada allowed, Srila Prabhupada allowed that. Yes. yes. But we should care for the cows. This is what I'm trying to make the point. It's yeah. like when you, just like the best cook is you. So the best milk that comes is from you, like that. Because if you look at cow care, first you have to see that the land is, look for a suitable land. Then you must have suitable grass. Then you must make sure the cows are happy. Make sure the cows are bathed, the cows are taken care. Make sure that they, any, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are treated well. And make sure that uh, uh, any injuries they are taken care of. You know, there's a whole load of things. And then make sure they are milked properly, not with machines and uh, make sure they are loved. So the list goes on so much, then only you get the milk. Yes. So my my doubt always is in commercial dairy, This many of these things will be missing. So that's why the, the important aspect of uh, Yatra having its own land, and it is not impossible, it's possible. Many people, the moment you say land, cows, they become, oh, it's gone, it's a many places failure, it's difficult. But it's it, it that's because we have made it up in our mind, this fallacy that it's difficult, it cannot be done. So we stay away and then we uh, adopt other means to get milk and ghee and all these things. But we should see that should come first, actually. It should have come first long ago. Yes. But it's still not happening, unfortunately. So... Uh, so, I mean, uh, that's what I like to say yeah. and uh, encourage this side of forums more and more. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Prabhu. Uh, sorry, yes. Prabhu. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhu. It was such a wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, of course, uh, now since we have already paid attention to cows, I think the awareness and the realization about the cows is, is uh, I mean, people are start to realize, especially the devotees. And uh, of course, uh, Dr. Parikshit, uh, Veera Parikshit and Raja Parikshit Prabhu have given a fantastic uh, analogy with all the Sastric evidence. And I, and of course, uh, um, a very uh, in inspiring uh, suggestion by His Grace Simisara Prabhu, the person in charge of cow protection in Malaysia. So this is uh, very inspiring that uh, I believe that sooner or later that everyone, because uh, as, as what Prabhu said just now, I also had the thought, you know, milk, any type of milk will do. But now after realizing, you know, it is not as what we think, right? So anyway, thank you so much. Uh, anyway, this is a fantastic uh, forum um, for this year. And of course, uh, next year, we will, we, will, we, will have, we will have more forums to create lots of awareness, uh, especially in the path of Bhakti. Anyway, um, so now we will open the, open the floor to, to, to questions and answer. So, if anyone uh, will have any question, kindly raise your hand. So, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Raman Aidu Prabhu, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Prabhu, uh, actually, this was a very good class. I thank Parchit for his knowledge, sharing our knowledge. Huh? Prabhu, uh, I would like to know uh, this A2 milk. If it comes from local farm, can we take it as A2 milk? That's my first question. Now, second question, mother's milk is A2 milk. That's what just now Pachis are selling. Mother's milk is A2 milk. When the baby born, her body is designed to consume A2 milk until go for solid food. Am I right? Same thing goes to the calf. When the calf drink milk, mother's milk, it's A2 milk. At certain age, the cow also let go the milk, go for solid grass or solid vegetarian vegetable vegetables grass. Now my question here, if that is the case, huh, elderly people consuming our A2 milk, 
let's forget about the artificial A1 milk. A2 milk consuming A2 milk elderly people, will it be any side effect? Thank you, Prabhu, uh, for the question. So actually, uh, from Shastras, we see that uh, milk is taken. As we see in Shri Prabhupada's own example, he took milk throughout his life, right? And he was so sharp that on his deathbed, right, uh, he was uh, speaking uh, 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 on Srimad Bhagavatam, right? We all have seen that uh, video that Srila Prabhupada knew exactly what he was speaking, right? So this is the Acharya. He has shown us that there is no any problem with milk, right? So uh, there may be some uh, studies saying that it is not good or whatever it is. We don't we don't use that as our as our evidence right the evidence is from shastras and traditionally we go to any uh, even in india today right a, a cup of hot milk is taken at night that's it right the problem is we take all kinds of things at night but actually by sunset you should finish your uh, dinner right whatever you want to eat and at night there's only one hot cup of milk before we go to bed so uh, going by that, by, uh, by the uh, Vedic tradition and uh, from Shastras, uh, in fact, uh, as far as I know, in Ayurveda Shastra, there, are, there is no any cap for age, right? Right, right. right? So it is to be taken throughout our life. So this is the uh, short answer, Prabhu. I hope that is, uh, uh, that, that answer is, that is uh, it satisfies you, Rekish. So which means, Prabhu, any age can consume the milk because I remember reading one article. That's why I raised the question. Baby drink milk until the age comes for solid and then the baby stops. So elderly people consuming the milk, if there is no issue on the body system. And there then is uh, from it is recommended, it is recommended for everyone. From Ayurvedic point of view, there is no problem. There's no problem. I'm not sure which article you're referring to, but uh, from the Shastric point of view, Ayurvedic point of view, there is no problem in taking milk at whatever age. Yeah, that is why that is why cow is go mata. Mata means mother. Mm -hmm. So we are taking her milk. So she's our mother. So when we don't have breast, breast milk is the best. So when there is no availability of breast milk, we can take cow milk, desi cow milk. Forever, uh, forever actually. In fact, you should take milk daily. Proper. In, in fact, he says people who don't take milk are sinful. Ah, yeah. Some people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Prabhu. much Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Parchit. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mama. Uh, any other questions, Prabhus and Matajis? <clears throat> Uh, okay, let me read some okay. questions. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, there's a comments from uh, Sedu Raman Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu. What about milk from cross breed cows, desi cow, and non desi cow? Is it good? Basically, cross breed is already, as we said, it's not the best option, right? Which means it's already a mixture of A1 and A2. Even it, if it cross breeds, there's a cross breed between non desi and desi, it's already. You know, that is basically what is A1 milk when you mix, right? So it should only be pure bread. Yes, so, yes. yes. Desi cows. So basically, as Prabhu, as Prabhu mentioned, you know, the crossbreed, the definition of hybrid cow means they actually breed it with a pure bread, right? So therefore, you had a mixed bread. So that is the supermarket milk, uh, which have the A1 and A2 component. So when you know what we are establishing here is, is probably to increase the milk yeah, yield so, and yeah so but on. the advantage advantage why we are doing this is because when we cross breed it increases the yield of milk right so and it's good for business marketing and meat so that is what what is happening that's why they are propagating this hybrid uh, so that is a thing but yeah definitely the best when we compare the superiority the quality the desi cow is the best pure breed so hope that answers the question, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, sorry, thanks, Prabhu. Prabhu. Thanks, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu, sorry. 
I was told that, uh, you know, the adeline milk, they say it's good for the bone. Artificial milk, uh, adeline. It is made of uh, limestone, for limestone, is it? Do you know anything about that, Prabhu? <laughs> the limestone, Prabhu, actually, in your tofu, uh, in your tofu <laughs> also, they use that. They, they, they put that limestone, you know. It's a number, it's a number. They're, they're to, to coagulate, yes. so... Uh, they put potassium to manganate, I think. <laughs> yes, bro. Some, you know, they put all all kind of. Actually, if you look at the formula milk, milk is less. All kinds of other things are there. You know, it's uh, all kinds of artificial things are there. Me kuning, yeah, limestone. Me kuning, uh, me kuning also, right? Mm. The the yellow me also they put limestone. You see, so imagine taking limestone uh, every day in our diet. It's from Epo. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you, Prabhu. Thank you. And, Not uh, as bad as oats. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, <laughs> comments from uh, Lali Krishna Prabhu. Yes, thank you for coming, Prabhu. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for the comments. Lali Prabhu is from Vrindavan. Right? Yes, yes. For yes, actually, Lali Krishna Prabhu, he is from Vrindavan. Huh? He is serving uh, a Krishna Balaram, huh? Krishna Balaram deity in Vrindavan. So we are very fortunate to have his association here. Uh, oh. Thank you very much, Prabhu. So yes, is there any other questions? Okay, there's one question from uh, hmm. Mataji, Revadi Mataji. Uh, those intolerance to milk can consume A to milk. So, Mataji, uh, you know, uh, you see, when you scientifically analyze the component of milk, when you have intolerance to milk, despite of A1 or A2, you are going to have intolerance. This is according to the scientific community, right? But when we look into the Ayurvedic perspective, you know, there are many incidents where when you allergic, when you have tolerance to the supermarket milk, mm -hmm. but when you uh, consume this proper milk, which is a desi cow, sometimes certain people, they can tolerate. So they are there. Uh, these things are there. So you can test it. So the best thing is you test it yourself. Uh, you, uh, you try the desi cow ghee, I mean desi cow milk. Uh, usually, most of the can cases, ask, they can tolerate. Can, can we ask how the person is taking intolerant cold or hot? Yeah, yeah, there are very, many factors. There are very, many factors. Very huh? good question. Uh, you know, because nowadays this, uh, uh, you know, lactose intolerance is very common. Now they are giving up milk because of this problem, right? The cold milk. Uh, milk. So according to Ayurveda Shastra, we not we should not consume a cold milk. We should not consume milk with uh, our normal food. You know, gravy. Uh, oh, so all these things are the incompatibility. Uh, so yeah, we have to look into all these factors as well. Yeah, but generally, uh, what I understand from the uh, Ayurvedic practitioner, they said when you consume the desi cow milk, you have less problems to intolerance. It is more compatible to your body. Right. So that is the understanding. So I mean, one good way, probably if you if you have no problem with your mother's milk, then you shouldn't have problems. Yes, with milk, yes. Right? Because structurally, it is same. Yeah. Structurally. I mean, logically. Speaking. Log yes, yes, yes. So another question. Um, how about dairy farm milk, which is sold at supermarket? Yeah. Basically, so this the dairy farm milk are all A1. It's all yeah, milk. basically, uh, uh, dear Prabhu and Matajis, whatever milk available right now to us in Malaysia is everything is actually the Western breed, right? But the best is if you can get pasteurized, like you know, the Bengali milk, our Bengali uncle milk, Punjabi milk from direct from farm that is actually Western milk, but you can get it directly, it is the best, no problem because it's not processed, no UHT. Uh, I, uh, that is the best recommendation in Malaysia. Uh, even in Kuching, we can get the A2 milk. In Kuching, there is one farm produce A2 milk. Uh, so that that is also there. But I think probably mm. if you want to buy, you know, if, especially for West, uh, West Malaysians, we should see how we can take it from uh, New Godruma. Yeah, you know? the best is we can take it from our farm. I, I think mm. that should be uh, yes. the, the standard. If you're going to take milk, since we know there is no A2, but these are protected milk, of course, we don't know what is the yield. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what is the yield in New Godruma, but I think at least temples for offering to Bhagavan, we should take it. Yeah. We should take it from. I uh, think uh, previously there is a distribution in, in North. Also, there is one. I uh, think you know, there's right. some there. I think previously Lanchang Farm will distribute to the devotees in KL. They will bring to distribute to the donors. Uh, gender pie. Gender pie, bro. Yeah. Right, right, right. That milk yeah. was yes, yeah, very, very good. good, very good. Right, right. How okay. about um, how about powdered milk? Same thing. Same thing, bro. You just they use the A one and um, 
make you, it. You must okay. always look into the origin of the milk. So origin. when the origin of the milk is actually is Western breed, then yeah, you have to be careful. Right. So any other questions, uh, Prabhu and Matajis? Okay, I think uh, there's no questions further. Yes, uh, Tineshwaran, he has a question. Uh, Prabhu, just a very basic question. Why A1 is called A1? Okay. And why A2 is called A2? Why is it not the other way around? Right. So, th thank you, Prabhu, for the question. So, this question is actually related to the chemistry of the milk, right? So, when you analyze the, uh, you know, the chemicals in the milk, right? So, when you look into, when the scientists, they take the uh, Western breed cow's milk and they analyze microscopically, right? So, when, when they see the structure of the protein, right? So, the basic component of protein is amino acids. So, when we analyze the component of amino acids, so there's a certain part of the amino acids differ when compared to uh, A2. Actually, it is almost same. A1 and A2 is almost same. It's only one component, one chemical different. Uh, to put it simple, just like H2O is a component. So when you add H2O3, that's a different. It's only one chemical different. So, but even so, it is one chemical different. When it degrades in our body, the A1 milk can cause a lot of damage. I think Prabhu is asking why is it named as A1? Why, why, why it is such a given why, name? Why, why, did okay. they, why did it name it? Okay. I, mean, I mean, if we look at it from the chemistry point of view, huh. even in H2O, the 2 hmm. is a subscript, right? Right, right, right. Hmm. Now, for the layman, whenever they see A1 uh, as the big one, big one and big two, so for the layman, it is it appears to be like mischievous, actually. To deliver yeah. the wrong message, like second right. class. <laughs> right. Right. Actually, uh, no. There's a no. There are some of the journals. What I, when I go through, they mentioned that actually, you know, why they call it A one is that because these people first discovered is the Western breed of milk. They are not exposed to the original milk, <laughs> so they only know this first milk. They call it A one. A one. Then after some years, they know oh, this is the best milk. Then they say okay, this is A two. <laughs> so <laughs> this is understanding. So okay, but now now the irony is. The eternal Surabi formula has become A2 now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> which has been uh, existing eternally. That is That has become A2. Irony. Yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that is the name given, Prabhu. But, so, yeah. but when you describe A2, it is superior. That's what they are telling. So in uh, this case, Prabhu, A2 is the best. You know, yeah. SPM all A1s, but when it comes to milk, A2 is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that that is the layman understanding. For the layman, when they see A1, so it it delivers uh, it implies superiority, right? Yeah. Lehman. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Prabhu, <laughs> for the wonderful question. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, anyone else have any question? How about anacle powder milk? Okay. Yeah. All powder you. milk are generally from the Western breed, so we should be very careful, especially for the formula milk of childrens. They are formula like milk contains a fish oil. No? Yeah, fish oil. yeah. One important thing for our devotees: <laughs> formula milk contains uh, fish oil. Mm -hmm. you must be very careful. Most of the formula milk, and they have about uh, twenty to twenty-five ingredients on a formula milk. So <laughs> we should be very careful. Okay. Uh, Prabhu, that uh, about anacle. Anacle is actually a energy milk for right. usually like disabled people. You know, for they they couldn't have digestion. I mean, they they couldn't consume food and everything. Hmm. So. How about if they're like that? That's why I think that's the question you asked actually. Come again, Rose. Let me say like uh, for some, some disabled people, they cannot eat, mm. they cannot digest certain food. So they take this kind of formula milk, anacle, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, uh, like osteoporosis, you know, there's a kind of milk, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, mm. Yes, yes. Actually, there are a lot of, you know, many other sources of calcium, right? Calcium and protein, right? We are taking milk because of calcium. Mm -hmm. So actually, when you take the normal milk, you can get a calcium, no problem. The problem with this milk is they have calcium, but they'll end up with no other complications. This is not mm. uh, So the, the modern scientists, they only focus on the microscopic, microscopic nutrition like calcium, protein. But, you know, Ayurvedic see holistically what it does to your gut, how it process, you know. So that is why when you analyze Ayurvedically, we can understand we have a lot of problems when you consume this milk, right? Just like uh, analogy I can give is meat. 
when you take meat is protein very good but mm. same thing for heart attack so mm. same same concept so you know so yeah. this is understanding bro so just before we end you can see here this is the i uh, you cannot cannot see the formula uh, i think it only focus on the face lab bro so no problem no you have to uh, off your background i think yeah very difficult to <laughs> <laughs> you can't see without that <laughs> can see oh yeah maybe from here Yeah, not sure. but basically that we are just trying to say that you know there are about uh, 20 ingredients in a formula milk so please if best is mother's milk or you can get a proper cow milk right so yes any other questions aprabhu sen mata ji okay so i think um there's no questions uh, there's no further questions and it's already okay so no questions okay so with that uh, we will first of all would like to our gratitude to everyone for coming and uh, joining this uh, uh, session we i think all of you have learned something new including me we have learned some new info which is very important and our gratitude uh, and our dandot pranam to his grace mr prabhu for taking your time and also enlightening us about this cow because all the while i was thinking just having a cow farm is no big deal but when you said about the process that's when i realized it's not a joke <laughs> it takes so much of sacrifice all right such a wonderful thing you have shared with us and also our speakers for today dr veera parikshit and dr raja parikshit our gratitude to both of you for coming and uh, creating such a wonderful awareness and to everyone all right thank you so much and uh, this is the last uh, forum for the year by this uh, ipo uh, bhakti yoga namahat center and uh, soon in the future we hope that we can come out with more and more program more and more uh, sensational topic uh, so please stay tuned until then please accept my humble obeisances all glories to shila prabhu but vancha kalpa kalpa rupya sthapana vinayaka vaishnava hare krishna good night thank you thank you prabhu thank you very much hare krishna prabhu good night thank you very much thank you sir prabhu thank you hare krishna